What is up, everybody, and welcome back to Courtside Convos. Today's conversation is going to be the injury report and waiver wire that I released every week for week 20. And this is probably a big, important week for most leagues. For me, for both my leagues that I'm in, it is the last week before finals, and or not finals, playoffs. And the interesting thing about this is that um, a lot of the teams, it's a one the one game difference and i know for a fact there's three people in my league that are all fighting for the last playoff spot or not to get eliminated in the last spot so whoever wins out wins it all whatever um then the other top three seeds are all fighting to get a bye whoever doesn't win out of like all three of them doesn't get the bye and could get screwed over easily um so this is a very important week for fantasy and there's been a lot of injuries actually this week that we'll be talking about here some potential ads that we won't know 100% if those are the ads you should be looking for um, until maybe some sample games that we can tell from there. But other than that, uh, we kind of know that it would be a little uh, certain uh, players should be added to your rosters. So let's get started with the Golden State Warriors. Um, I have Chris Paul here because Chris Paul did come back on Tuesday, which I did not expect. I said it would probably be around Wednesday to Thursday when uh, Chris Paul comes back, but they actually put him in Tuesday against the Wizards for a little couple of minutes. I didn't really play too much. Um, Milwaukee, Chicago, and San Antonio, kind of some interesting games for them. All home, which I think they usually always play better at home. Most teams do. Um, And the interesting part about this is that there's two players here from their starting lineup. Andrew Wiggins, kind of borderline starting, not starting player. Uh, <laughs> Brain Bzimski has inserted himself as a starter. Uh, could be questionable or out. Brain Bzimski is questionable already. Has been out for the past three games, I want to say. Out against the Raptors, Celtics, and there was one more, I'm pretty sure. Um, but Andrew Wiggins. Now, Andrew Wiggins is out for a personal matter. Last year, around this time, maybe a little earlier, Andrew Wiggins was again out for a personal reason. Um, You really wonder what it could be. Um, There's rumors going around that something else. I'm not going to really discuss it on to here. Um, But I hope the best wishes to him. Hopefully, he comes back here soon. If not, um, with both these players being out, potentially, um, Moses Moody is probably your best bet after the games that we've already seen, um, through, uh, with Andrew Wiggins out, especially just Andrew Wiggins. Cause he played when Andrew Wiggins out over clay clay played when Brandon Brzezinski, uh, was out. Um, Moses Moody got the starting job, did very good with the starting job. Uh, had a really good game. One of the games, another game had a decent game. That's going to be the guy that's going to be into the starting lineup is going to do really good. I mean, there's also others like Dario Saric and some other teams as well. But those teams, um, you know, those teams don't really, or those players aren't really as low as how people are on Moses Moody. As in, like, there's high roster space. They're going to play the second unit more. Moses Moody is going to play starting minutes, and he's going to work well with it because he's going to be the guy they're going to pass and try and shoot the three. So it is potentially somebody that might not hit all of his shots, but hits some shots, and I think that's very worth it. Memphis Grizzlies, and I have to show you this out list because when doing this video, I'm just like, who's going to play? Who's going to play? Memphis Grizzlies, if all of these players are truthfully out for a certain injury, like i get jaw he's definitely out for an injury desmond bain probably out uh jaron jackson jr i don't know but some of these like brandon clark i think they could have maybe pushed a little bit more um uh marcus smart's probably out actually i don't know some of these i'm a little iffy on four games this week against philly brooklyn game should be interesting atlanta could be interesting depending on trey young okc should be a blowout so some people should be playing way more minutes um same with even the Philly one. Um, but yeah, all these players, I don't know. If all of them are out because of injury, that's insane. This is like a record. If not, the league needs to check them for tanking. Because I'm just saying, if you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine players out of your 15 man roster out for injury. Fire the training staff. Fire the training staff. Fire all the health and safety staff. They ain't, they ain't keeping players healthy. Um, but for the ads on here, 
I have Santi Aldama, who hasn't really skyrocketed. I would have Vince Williams Jr., but he has skyrocketed on roster. Uh, Jordan Goodwin is another player that has done pretty decent so far. Um, some decent games when I talk about, you know, games overall where he's played okay and done very good. Luke Kennard has been out for a while. Crazy to say that he's been out uh, with all this list as well. Um, also, Jaron Jackson Jr. is doubtful for this next upcoming game. Probably going to be out. Jaron Jackson Jr., that's where the tanking needs to be looked at because that's crazy. Um, Luke Kennard, though, is uh, going to be playing again. And I think if his roster, if he is not rostered, you should roster him just in case for this week. Because um, there could be some good things. But insanity. Insanity that this many players are out. This reminds me of like COVID back then when put like... 10 players on a team would get out and they had to just sign all these random people crazy up next to the new york knicks um games against atlanta orlando and philly all at home as well but the new york knicks man they're another team that i think truthfully has been getting hit with the injury bug um julius randall og on noby jalen brunson we need to see uh who's out for real because they've always been listed as kind of questionable this week some of them could come back um but jalen brunson Injured immediately in the Cavaliers game. Uh, literally tries to shoot up a shot and cannot move and is in tremendous pain. They called it a knee contusion um, and soreness in his knee. I don't know how someone can scream like that. It's like, it's like for example, Anthony Edwards the other the last week. Was it last week? I'm pretty sure it was last week. Non-contact injury with his leg, ankle, screaming, needed help to walk off. Came back in immediately. How, do, how does that happen? Like, do you need to go to the bathroom? Like, is this another Paul Pierce scenario? Jalen Brunson is probably different. I do think that when I saw that injury, I was like, he's out for the year. Oh, my God. He's out for the year. And now it's just soreness. So, um, we'll see how long he's out. Maybe it develops into a bigger injury that they're checking up for right now. And they're just saying it's soreness for now. Um, but my potential ad is Miles McBride, the backup guard. They already have Dante DiVincenzo in most leagues. DiVincenzo, Josh Hart, Isaiah Harkenstein. Um, I'm trying to think of somebody else. It's probably rostered. Miles McBride, not really. Oh, Alec Burks, Bojan. I don't think they're going to get the starting because I think Miles McBride is that true point guard. Um, this is a good ad if Jalen Brunson is out for a little bit. I would not be shocked if he gets some good reps, good minutes, and scores some good points. Uh, not really uh, taken in a lot of leagues. Um, but I do expect Jalen Brunson to probably come back in the near future. So we'll have to see. But crazy stuff, in my opinion. Crazy stuff. Up next is the Phoenix Suns games against Denver, Toronto, and Boston. Um, other than Toronto game, kind of a difficult week for the Suns, in my opinion. Especially with Devin Booker out now for 7 to 10 days. Um, very interesting. I know for a fact that uh, after last night's game, I could tell you that probably uh, um, it's going to be a big impact on them. They did very well, but the Suns were losing badly against the Thunder at one point, but then they come came back, started to do decent. Players locked in, and the Thunder came out with the win. Some potential ads, which kind of shocks me. Grayson Allen only having 28% on ESPN should be an instant cop if you are somebody uh, in those leagues. Um, Royce O'Neal, 37, 33. These are players that are going to get more reps with Devin Booker out. I was debating on putting Eric Gordon here. But I think they're going to move Bradley Beal to the the uh, Bradley Beal to the point. Royce O'Neal or Eric Gordon to shooting guard. And then keep Grayson Allen, um, KD, and Nurkic right there. Um, Grayson Allen has been excellent at 9 cat leagues. I literally think he's probably like... I'm gonna say like top 100 maybe maybe like i mean that's probably very valid for him already um probably maybe top 80 even he's been nice like outstanding for nine cat leagues points leagues as well has been really performing well royce o'neal i mean he's just gonna be decent um we're gonna have to see with the sun so because i think devin booker's injury is going to impact them i think during toronto game if you get somebody like somebody that's a little younger on the younger side for the Suns, I think you could really get somebody that could get a huge score if it's a blowout game. Up next, the Toronto Raptors. Speaking of the Raptors, uh, Pelicans, Phoenix, and Portland. I think this is the last one here. 
Um, Bruce Brown was out last game. Yaka Pearl was out last game. And Sky Barnes was out last game. But Sky Barnes is the only one out of all three of them that is out indefinitely. Um, ESPN project projects he'll come back in April. Do I think that'll happen? We'll see, because I think this is a tanking Raptors team that are go is going to try their hardest to get into the top five, top six, to have that, you know, feel like that for sure of having their pick, because once it moves out to top seven, Spurs get it. Um, so with this, I think Sky Barnes could be out for the rest of the year, which is crazy, because Sky Barnes was leading his team in points, rebounds, assists, steals, and blocks. Um, he was first in all those categories, and that's not even like... You could, I've said this on lesser athletes before when they when I was saying how the Raptors start the rebuild. That was not before um, uh, Siakam and OG Anobi was traded. He was like second in some maybe. He was first and second in all of those categories with all those players still on. And a lot of people want to say, oh no, sh no, no, duh, Sky Barnes is Sky Barnes is first and everything. Their team's taking. They have all their players gone. Well, this was way before. Sky Barnes is an excellent player that has done very well in uh, all categories, which nine cat leagues, of course. But I would definitely with a fractured, I want to say metacarpal in his, let me see if I get this right, in his third finger on his left hand. Someone tell me if I'm right in the comments if you're watching this video. I do not know actually exactly if that's true or not. I know it, I know it is a fractured metacarpal though. Um, but some potential ads. Kelly Olenek, he was projected crazy in my league uh, for my points league I'm in um, the other day. Um, and did not hit it, let me tell you that. Gary Chan Jr., um, another person I think it has the capabilities of doing very well. Um, and most of these are with Bruce Brown and Yaka Pearl. If they are out for consecutive games, you should give them a chance. I think Kelly Olynyk, especially. Do I think the Raptors could be boosting Kelly Olynyk's value to maybe trade him away? I could see. So it doesn't really make sense to have Kelly Olynyk on the team right now. Gary Trent Jr. could be the same way because I do think that that's a tradable contract. Um, we're going to have to just see, though, because I think Bruce Brown and Yaka Pearl coming back could hurt their value a little bit. And actually now finally the Cleveland Cavaliers, I am now coming back while editing this news came out that Donovan Mitchell would be missing the next three games because of an injury that he's been kind of dealing with, doesn't know if he's in or out. Uh, I think he's missed the last two games already for it, and he's going to be missing the next three games for sure uh, against Boston, Atlanta, and Minnesota. So now thinking about that, um, I have to quickly just do this because it just came out now. Um, Karis LeVert has seemed like a player that has always gone off when a main player is out. Uh, look at Garland, look at Mitchell even. Like, anytime when a main guard is out, he usually goes off. If he is available in your leagues, instantly grab him. Um, another player I would look at is probably Max Strew, somebody that has done very well too. Um, very efficient sometimes too for 9-cat leagues, other times not so much. So it could be very hit or miss with him. Um, I'm trying to just think off my head, Isaac Okoro, but yeah, editing this, I just realized that. So now let's go to the outro. I don't know. I hope you guys enjoy. If you want to see more content of me, you can go on lesser athletes. We've been releasing YouTube shorts, a podcast, some other, I have my mock draft that just came out recently. Uh, go check that out. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoy and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.